I am Dr. S. Mishra. I am a dental surgeon and I welcome you all to my channel Now Ask the Doctor. Today we will discuss about defense. We will talk about the common types of defense mechanism. Today's discussion will help you to understand yourself and other people a little more closely. So let us begin. Now what is a defense? Defense is the act of protecting or defending or shielding. Now let us talk about the types of defense mechanism. The most common defense mechanism is denial. It occurs when we refuse to accept facts or when we refuse to accept reality. Arguing against an anxiety provoking stimuli by stating it simply doesn't exist. Many people use denial in everyday lives to avoid dealing with painful feelings or areas of life. Example of denial? People living with drug or alcohol addiction often deny that they have a problem. Again, victims of traumatic events may deny that the event ever occurred. Actually, denial functions to protect our ego from things with which we cannot cope. Now, denial can involve a flat rejection of the existence of a fact or reality, while in some cases it involves admitting that something is true but minimizing its importance. Sometimes people will accept the reality and the seriousness of the fact but they will deny their own responsibility and instead they will blame other people or other outside forces. So after denial comes the second most common type of defense mechanism. It is displacement. Displacement is taking out impulses or anger or irritation or frustration on a less threatening target. Example of this displacement is very common. Suppose somebody had a very bad day at work, then they go home and they show their anger or frustration or irritation on their spouse or their children. So what happens is that they cannot argue with their boss. So they vent out their frustration on a less threatening target. In the Example, the less threatening target is their spouse or their children. So there is displacement of anger from the boss to the spouse or their children. So displacement involves taking out our frustrations, feelings and impulses on people or objects that are less threatening. Aggression is often due to displacement. So aggression or aggressive behavior is an example of displacement of anger, right? And displacement can, of anger can also be on objects. Suppose somebody had a bad day at their workplace and then they return home and they cannot vent out their frustration. Then they suddenly took a glass and they, uh, and they threw it. So they are showing or displacing their anger on the glass, in this case the object. Most household quarrels and divorces are due to this displacement of anger. So you should have a control over yourself. Now comes the third most common type of defense mechanism and it is compensation. So compensation is a strategy where one covers up consciously or unconsciously. Weakness, Frustration, desires or feelings of shortcomings, incompetence in one area of life through the gratification or excellence in another area. Now positive compensation may help us to overcome our difficulties, but negative compensation may result in a feeling of inferiority. Example of compensation, uh, childhood fear of water is overcompensated by an obsession with selling. Now the fourth most common type of defense mechanism is the projection. 
So what is projection? A person accusing someone else of having thoughts or feelings that they themselves have. Right? So throwing the blame for the unwanted event upon others. Example? I will give you an example. A person who realized that they are being aggressive during an argument but they may accuse the other person of aggression. And this deflects criticisms away from themselves onto the other person. Projection can cause self-harm as it may stop someone from accepting and taking responsibility for their own thoughts or behaviors. So projection is very harmful. Now comes the fifth one. The fifth one is rationalization or intellectualization. It involves a person using reason and logic to avoid uncomfortable or anxiety provoking emotions. So, the providing of socially acceptable reasons for one's inappropriate behavior. So, example, a student saying that I have the right to cheat in the exam because the lessons weren't well explained. And this is a basic example of rationalization. So, the student, they very well in their mind, they very well know that this is not a right thing to do. But they are giving logic in order to justify their guilt. Okay, so this is a basic example of intellectualization or rationalization. Now comes the sixth one. The sixth one is the reaction formation. So what is reaction formation? Reaction formation is a tendency to act in a manner which is opposite to one's true feelings. Example, greeting one of your enemies warmly just to show that you don't hate him. Okay. So this is an example of reaction formation. So we act in a manner which is opposite to our true feelings. And most of us often do this reaction formation. Right. Now comes the next type of defense mechanism and that is regression. Now what is regression? So, regression is a defense mechanism leading to the temporary or long-term reversion of the ego to an earlier stage of development rather than handling unacceptable impulses in a more adaptive way. Example, an example will make it more clear. A young wife, for example, might retreat to the security of her parents' house after her first quarrel with her husband. So the young wife, instead of handling the unacceptable impulses in a more adaptive way, she went back to her parents' house. So this is an example of regression type of defense mechanism. Now comes the next one. It is called undoing. So what is undoing? The person actually or symbolically erase a previous consciously done intolerable action. Let me give you a simple example. A child who has just made mother angry kisses her to avoid her scolding. Right? So this is undoing. Now comes repression and suppression. So, repression is another well-known defense mechanism. Repression acts to keep informations out of conscious awareness. However, these memories don't just disappear. They continue to influence our future behavior. Let me give you an example. For example, a person who has repressed memories of abuse suffered as a child may later have difficulty in forming relationships. So repression is basically the exclusion of distressing memories. Now what is suppression and what is its difference from repression? So repression involves the unwanted thoughts being unconsciously pushed out of awareness whereas suppression is the purposeful or consciously trying to forget or not think about the painful 
or unwanted thoughts. So repression is unconsciously done whereas suppression is done consciously or purposefully. That is the difference. Now comes sublimation. So what is sublimation? It is acting out unacceptable impulses in a socially acceptable way. Example, becoming a surgeon because you desire to cut. Sublimating your aggressive impulses towards a career as a boxer. So this is sublimation. Now comes distortion. What is distortion? Distortion involves a person believing something to be true when it is not true. Distorted thinking is a common feature of anxiety and depression. Then comes dissociation. What is dissociation? Dissociation involves feeling disconnected from a stressful or traumatic event or a feeling that the event is not really happening. This is dissociation. And the next one is identification. What is identification? Identification is increasing feelings of worth by identifying self with another person. People identify with others because they feel they have something in common. This is identification. That's all for today. If you find my video helpful and informative and if you think I can contribute something positive in your life and make you a little more aware about health related issues then please subscribe to my channel and please share my videos with your dear ones. Thank you, stay healthy and stay happy.